Hello and welcome to round 10 at Grand Prix Providence. There you see our teams down there in the feature match area. Peach Garden Oath, Owen Turtenwald, William Jensen, and Reed Duke versus Osip Levadovich, Ben Sek, and Ben Lundquist. Both teams currently at 7 and 2, so they need to win out if they want any hope at contention for the top four. This is a great matchup here down in our table A. The players are arranged A, B, C, starting with Owen Turtenwald <coughs> and uh, Osip Levadovich here. Uh, you know, Osip's a pro tour champ. Yep. And uh, a really accomplished player on the pro tour. He hasn't been playing as much as he used to, but, uh, you know, Osip's no joke. And, of course... Well, that's Owen Turnwell. Oh, yeah, one of the best in the world. Kicking things off with what looks to be a blue-green merfolk duck there. We have a merfolk branch walker, which explored, revealed a deep root champion, champion, which is now in his graveyard, and a siren storm tamer that he can use to kind of effectively counter any spells that Osip might throw his way. Oh, no. Oh. Osip's not going to throw much his way Whoa. this game. This is a very quick start from Turtenwald, and it is met by Missalandrop Discard from Osip, and this is going to be real trouble. And once again, wow. Owen's firing on all cylinders, hitting once again with an explore creature. Yeah, Tishana's Wayfinder there, getting a counter here. Osip has managed to find another land, which <coughs> if you keep a hand like that, you hopefully have a pretty low curve. We'll see what he uh, put into play here. Yeah, we get a little hint of what he's up to. He discarded the uh, dinosaur up there, and then now we see... Drover, Drover the Mighty, right, which is another dinosaur-centric card, although it doesn't only go in the dinosaur deck. That's, of course, where it's best. The truth is, though, it's just going to be too late here. Yeah. He can use it to add one mana of any color to his mana pool. Gets plus two, plus two, as long as he controls another dinosaur. So we'll see if he uh, will be able to hit another land drop or perhaps play something on three here to stem at least a little bit of the bleeding from... Owen Turtonwall, but Owen has just been off to a blazingly fast start, even laying something down here like a River Sneak, which gets plus one, plus one, and you play a Merfolk. Seems like it'll be great in his deck. Yeah, one of these Ooh. creatures is does stand the chance of dying here to the Atsukan Archer. All right, it's going to target the River Sneak. Yeah, and this is a choice that Owen does have the ability to counter that ability uh, <coughs> with the Storm Chaser. You can counter spells or abilities. It's just a matter of which one Owen would prefer to keep on the battlefield. And it does make sense to do what he did here, given that the Archer has reach anyway, and that Storm Chaser wasn't going to be able to get through. All right, well, the team swings in here for Owen. That's, again, Archer is going to block the Tishana's Wayfinder. And a Wind Strider is going to be flashed in to pump up that River Sneak to 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, normally you wait to pump to put in the Strider on your opponent's turn so that they don't know it's coming, and you can maybe get an advantage out of that by blocking or changing the combat math where your opponent didn't know. But Wind Strider is a merfolk and does trigger, trigger the River Sneak, so that's a valuable point of damage where the sneaky part of the equation has <laughs> almost no value to Owen at this point, so he very correctly flashes that in on his main phase to get in an additional point of damage and put Osip down to three. Yeah, Osip here kind of taking a look at the board, seeing if there's anything that he can do. Rip on Craig is a play there. Four mana yeah. available, no play. Just doesn't really look like there's much he can do at this point. Also, any interaction from Owen effectively ends the game. Another Tishana's Wayfinder here for Turtenwald who seems to have put together just a dream merfolk deck. It does look like a properly aggressive blue-green merfolk deck. There's no doubt about it. Trigger, trigger. Gosh, and he keeps... Wow. Wow. Okay. I'll keep that on top, River Herald's boon. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's two plus one plus one counters on any of his creatures. All right, so Owen swings in with the team. Osip lining up some blocks here. The archer's going to... Jump in front of the wind strider yeah. and the drover in front of the wayfinder. And this is a lethal attack from Owen, so Osip has to have something that he can do. Fiery cannonade here from Osip is going to deal two to all non pirate creatures. You know, that is one of the ways that he could come back from this, though I wonder if it's still just a bit too late as his whole entire board goes away. Yeah, Owen's still left with two three threes, and we know he has a trick on top to add more plus one, plus one counters. The players just call that Pirate Clasm. <laughs> it's so good. Which is kind of sweet, but 
In this case, it did manage to get rid of most of the board, but unfortunately for Osip, too little, too late. Yep, he's just going to scoop him up. Owen Turtenwald taking game one there versus Osip Levadovic. Let's check in here on table B. Ben Sek versus William Huey Jensen. Looks like uh, Huey's on Red Black Pirates. He's got one of the best ones in play there. Dire Fleet Captain. Ben Sek looks to be on a merfolk deck himself. And uh, one that I was expecting to see yesterday, but I'm happy to see <laughs> happening right here on camera now. Jade Guardian yeah, equipped I, with one with the wind. Yeah, you have, uh, you've been pretty excited about this deck. <laughs> I have been. You talked about it at dinner. You talked about it in the booth. Look, you Marshall, talked about it on our break. When, you talked about it this morning at when Starbucks. When you love something, you love something. <laughs> and I love Boggles. And here we have Boggles oh, Unlimited. Look what he's doing. <laughs> yes! Do it! Wow. So that's eight power right now, and Jensen's at... Seven, Ten. right? Oh, is it seven? I'm sorry. Well, he had two counters on it, right? So two, oh. four, six, eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't enough because it looks like Jensen had lethal. Oh, that's great, though. Happy to see it. <laughs> but it looks like a Team Peach Garden Oath off to an early lead here in round 10 of day two. Grand Prix Providence both. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. A yeah. win there in Reed Duke's column as well. Peach Garden Oath all up a game. Versus the team of Osip, Ben, and Ben. Yeah, you've got to think coming into a tournament like this when you're Peach Garden Oath, you've really got something to kind of defend coming off uh, as champions of Cleveland earlier this year. Yeah, it's interesting to, uh, if you ever get a chance to be around the Peach Garden Oath while they're actually playing, it's really fun. Like, you see the sense of urgency from, from Jensen there as he yeah. gets up to, to deliver some information. Uh, you know, Reed tends to kind of do his thing, but he'll ask if he needs to. And uh, and Turntwald and Jensen communicate a lot. They also were roommates in real life. Right. And, you know, if you're ever over at their place, they do this too. Like uh, Owen will, you know, ask questions about magic or propose theories or, you know, <laughs> throw things out and, and kind of just, you know, it's a way, it's a way to learn when you're at his level, right? Because he doesn't need to be taught any of the strategic stuff or any of the, really anything at this point. So it's almost like theoretical type stuff. Sure. So he wants to hear how Jensen will answer a bunch of different types of questions like that so that he can start, you know, developing, or I shouldn't say start developing, finish kind of developing that side of his brain about, you know, how to approach these really complex problems. Because, you know, with players of this caliber, every player at the table, by the way, uh, you know, First level, second level, third level thinking is inherent. They, they just do that now. And you start actually going, you know, that many layers deeper. It's really interesting stuff. I remember the tweet that Owen tweeted out after they won Cleveland. Something like, if you forgot who runs these streets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's, you know, like as much as, as he's dedicated to learning the game and, and, you know, staying on top of it. He's also just a ham, you know, <laughs> you, you'll just, you'll just get a lot of that kind of, you know, post pictures of Muhammad Ali and stuff. And it's like, okay, Owen, all right. <laughs> okay, we get we it. We know we you're great it. at this. Don't worry, buddy. All right. I'm just going to take a peek here because I have to know, Marshall. I'm looking at Ben Sex deck list mm -hmm. here. Three copies of uh, J Guardian. Is that it? Yep. Three J Guardians, uh, Hexproof, <laughs> and two copies of One with the Wind. Okay. So we saw one of those and then the two One with the Winds in the game. Yeah. So. So it looks to be, you know, that's kind of one of the win conditions of this deck. But it's also a straightforward for merfolk deck there huh. as well. Only playing one of two Storm Sculptures. I'm a little surprised to see that. Yeah. Two Water Trap Weavers. That's nice. Good card. Yeah. He is playing two of three Jungle Delver. That is interesting. Just what a one drop. What? He's playing a Jungle Delver over a Storm Sculptor? We'll have to have a conversation after no, this. No, you know, he might like it for the late game. Oh, sure. and I just saw it down here. Tashana, Voice of Thunder. Yeah, so that's nice. a real thing, too. All right, well, we're underway here in game two of our A table, Osip versus Owen. Oh, this is interesting. We, had a, we have a wild growth walker in play for Osip, which uh, gains you some life and gets a counter every time you explore, which uh, we haven't really seen him play a lot this weekend. Now I'm su super curious to see if he can make that thing work because the few times that I have seen it work, it was really impressive. Oh, boy. Wow. That Who was a brutal it? fight. That was brutal indeed. Atsakan Archer taking down a Shaper Apprentice from Owen. That's a huge Pew! tempo play. 
Yeah, and this is pretty good for Owen to get back into it, though, because one of the problems that you'll face if if you are this uh, Merfolk deck is that getting through a 1-4 just with your creatures alone is actually kind of hard. You need a, a combat trick or something like that because so many of yours are 2 or 3 power. Uh, but Shapers of Nature, assuming that Owen has another land drop, well, does it just fine. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Three and a green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Two and a blue, remove one of those counters, draw a card. Yeah, just an engine and kind of the hallmark card of a merfolk deck. This is an interesting attack here from Osip. Sure is. You know, I think he, he sees the writing on the wall that he's not going to be able to block. And the question is, if I'm sitting in Owen's seat, if, if, o, if, o, if Osip goes, okay, I won't be able to block, I have a free attack. Like, yeah. even if Owen blocks here, there's no downside to it. If he does block, I could have any number of combat tricks, and Osip's a good enough player to recognize that and maybe just try to chip in there for the free damage. And this is exactly what I was talking about with those super tight spots, even though it's one damage. It's one damage. It's just one damage. And you've also got to think about raid in this format, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, in, in, in the red deck, he could have some... I don't think there's any green raid cards, but, no. you know, it is interesting, though, because one damage, A, could totally matter. Yes. Right? It, it absolutely can matter. But he, that's the thing, is that Osip knows that it's only one. Yes! Do you see that? What happened? He bluffed him. He didn't block. And he's super stoked about it. <laughs> Look at him. Look how happy he is. Oh he's God. just rubbing it in his face. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at Osip. <laughs> he even he even turned Walt has to just die laughing. <laughs> oh, this is that too is good. Fantastic. <laughs> he bluffed one point of damage through Owen Turnwald and it's just the greatest <laughs> day of his career. <laughs> I mean, I'm, if I'm not blocking that, come on, give me a break. But see, that's what I'm saying is that Owen knows that Osip knows that it's like you can't block this, right? Cuz right? it's only one point of damage and if you lose your shapers of nature, it's a disaster. <laughs> And he, they both know that. Oh, that's incredible. That was just <laughs> too good. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, too, Osip Levadovich, he comes from a time in Magic that's different than it is now. Yeah. The players were, as a group, younger mm -hmm. and a bit more brash, a little bit less mature. And they there was a lot more trash talking and a lot more... Um, Try, trying to like uh, bully, intimidate, you know, I don't mean it in like an over the top sense, sure. but you know, make it so you make a mistake because of right. the way that I'm talking and playing and stuff. Now, Osip, he, you know, he plays pretty, like that was for fun. Right. Like he was having right. fun with that. But, you know, he's more expressive, you know, and that's how people were back then uh, compared to now. They're very stoic these days. That, yeah. That's uh, sort of the MO from the, from the pro community. Oh, that's so funny. And I have to say, it's a much, it's a much more inviting and polite place to be these days but you do miss a little of that flair you know that you see from from <laughs> the flash and trash as it were indeed <laughs> well meanwhile owen turtenwald has slapped a pair of one with the wind on those shapers of nature been able to chip in for some damage here osip has matched things up with an emperor's vanguard and a spike-tailed ceratops as well here's an exali's diviner that'll go exploring finds a mountain but uh, he's been able to develop his board quite nicely here. There, I'm trying to figure out how I can get Osip to come back and play on the Pro Tour regularly now after yeah, that. Because that yeah. was just the best moment of the whole weekend, like <laughs> easily. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> that was just awesome. Just go up there, Marshall, and just kind of, you know, be very earnest about it. We need you. We, we need, need you, buddy. buddy. We need you. Yeah, yeah, like, you know those right. movies where they, like, yeah. come back out of retirement? No, I'm out of the game. Yeah. I'm out of the game. We need you one last ride. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, a red card from Osip, Frenzied Raptor 4 2. Oh, yeah. It was interesting. We did get to see that Wild Growth Walker benefit from an explore mm -hmm. off that Diviner there, gaining him three life. <coughs> yeah, three life, uh, which could prove absolutely critical in a racing situation that we find ourselves in here. Ooh, speaking of absolutely critical, is hitting with the Wayfinder plus also getting that pump spell up as well. And he's going to pin it. Yeah, it, it looks like. Uh, Owen does not feel like he can win this race and is going to have to pump the brakes here. As you see, he's not attacking anymore with his Shapers of Nature. Yeah, Shapers of Nature hanging back on defense. Here we go, another activation. Uh, Exali's Diviner finds a nice one. Yeah, Colossal Dreadmaw 
Right now, Osip does not seem to have enough mana to cast it. So it's the big question is, sorry, is if he's got, um, you know, another land in his hand sure. to play. 6-6 six, six, Trample. Yeah, he's going to get the counter on the walker and the three life regardless. Uh, but next turn, you know, casting a 6-6 six, six Trampler, if you can do it, is very attractive. He put it on top, so he surely yep. has a land in his hand. Yeah, 6-6 six, six Trampler on this board does look pretty good. Ravenous Daggertooth is a follow-up play here. We'll be able to give him some more life, potentially, if it's dealt damage. It does have Enrage. Kind of interesting. He actually didn't play a land there, though he does have one. Oh, does he? Yes. Maybe he... He's, like, trying to... Like, if you know what you're drawing and you're not going to play the land anyway, then you may as well hide that information from your opponent because you can't hit land into land if you know what your next card is and you right. only have one land in hand. But that kind of you know, level of thinking is really cool. Right, because he, Owen could think, well, maybe he put the 6-6 six, six on top, he doesn't have the land, but he thinks he'll draw it eventually. Exactly. And it might change slightly how Owen plays or how he perceives this game to go. Yeah, uh, when, when you play your land drops is kind of one of those next level up um, strategy scenarios. For yeah, and players. here was a particularly niche scenario, given that both players knew the top card of Osip's library. That is just not something you see that often. Right. You know, Explore, of course, does make that happen fairly frequently now. But I, I can't tell you, the, the, the mind games that these two are playing against each other is so fascinating. And boom, boom, he just throws there it on the it table is. like, add it the whole time, buddy. All right, we're going to draw a card here for Owen after he added a counter and removed it. Yeah from those Shapers of Nature. Yeah, uh, uh, very likely Osip is going to attack with everything next turn and kill Owen. So Owen is desperately trying to dig for some way to stem the, the tide here, and it looks like that will not be happening. Let's see what he's got, though. Oh! <laughs> Cancel <laughs> that order! <laughs> wow! Return them all to your hand, Osip! Wow, psych, I lied. <laughs> 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 Don't count Turtwald out. No, but I will say uh, the one, the, the really interesting scenario that we have now, so Osip is stuck on two green mana sources with all of his creatures being green except for one. So, like, for example, he could just replay the Colossal Dreadmaw, just go. Yeah. But he also could play the Wild Growth Walker and the Exali's Diviner, Gain, gain life. 3 Life, yeah. you know, and get that train rolling again. But he's really would love to have seen a forest off the top of his library so that he could spell... Oh! There it is. So that he could cast three spells this turn. Meanwhile, an update from Table B. Ben Sek has tied things up with Huey one game apiece. Hexproof. Hexproof Guardian gets the job done. You know, I, I think if I were you... You should back off on it because I have a feeling that in about a month, people are going to be real sick of getting oh, yeah, and you're going to be like, this is so fun. I love yeah. this. And they're going to be like, Maria likes it. <laughs> Look, I've already lost to it like three times. <laughs> and you still liked it? I mean. That's dedication. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love you just how you are, Jade Guardian. Even if you're smacking me around. <laughs> All right. And so this is Here a nice go. way right, yeah. for Osip to get right back into this. He's going to play his Wild Growth Walker again, getting three life each of those Exali's Diviners off of their Explorers. Both finding a spell, becoming one fours. It's cool to see the Wild Growth Walker kind of in action, doing its thing. It really is. And it's a significant presence on this board here. It's a 3-5, and it just gained Osip six life yeah, in that last absolutely. sequence. Absolutely. You know, he also just hit hit, so he's got two Exali's Diviners that are also seen it there one for and really has given him the cushion that he needs to start getting those bigger creatures out next turn. There's a deep root champion for Owen Turtenwald gets a plus one plus one counter for every spell that non creature spell that you cast. Shapers of nature considering flying in. A lot of mana available to Owen as well, which Shapers of Nature, a really excellent mana sink for this deck. Shapers of Nature hits the red zone for five. I wonder if Owen can actually piece together a race from this scenario, though. 
<coughs> All right, the team is just going to swing in here for OSIP. He has a grip full of cards thanks to that river's rebuke. <laughs> Can develop back out his board potentially with yeah. some blockers. Looks like Owen's going to go ahead and take three damage here and go for a double block on one of the diviners. Hmm. Double block here signifying Owen does, in fact, have something to trigger that champion. Osip on 10, Turtenwald on 9. Not forget uh, the he's shapers. He's just going to put a counter on it. All right, so... Uh, Osip does have to win this game. Reed Duke has won his match versus Ben Lundquist oh, there wow. on table C. Unless Ben Sec wins his game with... He would also have to win his game with Huey. So we see a post-combat uh, Atsukan Archer, and that was going to fight to finish off the, uh, the two-toughness creature, which had already taken one. But looks out, Lookout's Dispersal is a trigger for that card and puts a plus one plus one counter on it which means that it's actually out of range and that's a pretty big swing back in Turtonwald's favor Lookout's dispersal of course cancelling a spell unless this controller plays four costs one less to cast if you control a pirate which Owen does not yeah the interesting part about this as well is that if Osip pays for it <coughs> to keep the Atsukan Archer uh, he will be tapped out with one creature, and Owen has lethal. So what that means is is that Owen, let's see, he can go uh, three, five, six, seven, nine. He can get in for nine total if he wants to dump all of his mana into his flyer. So not quite enough. But if Owen has any way to interact, he could get in. He also gets in for five, block that thing, seven. Yeah, it's just nine at the most right now. But that also leaves Osip pretty all in on one creature. Uh, again, any bounce spell or anything like that would, would end the game. Oh, what a scary position here for Osip. I thought there was no way Owen was winning this game before that River's Rebuke. He just had a massive board full of monsters. My first draft of the set, I had two Shapers of Nature in my deck. Wow, nice work. Oh, yeah, it was great. Was it awesome? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that card seems quite strong, especially at this stage of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, you can just feel free to put counters on things mm -hmm. if you need to, draw cards if you need to. Does it all. Yeah, it looks like he is going to go ahead and keep the uh, Atacan Archer by pain. And no, no reason to fight. Again, this is Owen's game to win, though, now. If he has any way to get that archers out of the way or get any extra power beyond one of the activations of his uh, creature, then he can just win on the spot. He is so close right now. And you mentioned it a second ago, Maria. If he wins his match, the round goes to Peach Garden Oath. Yep. Owen out of cards in hand. Two activations, potentially, of plus one, plus one counters on the table there for Turtenwald. He's kind of separating his lands out into fours there. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has a way to do it, because the other option that Osip has, uh, you know, given the fact that the Archers has reach, is just to block the big creature in the air. And that really limits how much damage Owen can get in for the turn, and it creates a situation where, again, if Owen can't get rid of the archers, which we know he can't, lethal isn't possible. Owen here swinging in with the Shapers of Nature and the Deep Root Champion. So this is eight damage total, and then two activations is ten. So this does force Osip to block. 
He likely will block the flyer, given that if he blocks the champion, Owen can simply pump it twice and kill the archer anyway, and then he will have prevented uh, less damage than if he blocks the flying creature. He also may be interested in enticing Owen to do that. The problem with it is, is that Owen isn't compelled to do so. He can just throw a counter on it and, and kill the flyer either way. So my guess is that, is that Osip will want to block the Shapers of Nature in the air just because it stands to prevent a little bit more damage. He's not going to, though. Owen is just going to go ahead and pump up, and <clears throat> the chump block happens anyway. Owen so, puts a plus one, plus one yeah, counter on the uh, champion. This, this does mean, though, that Osip is going to take an extra damage in the air. Oh, he did have a card. He did have one. It was upside down on the table, black sleeve. Exali's keeper. Well, that's a huge one for Turtonwald because the way is clear now. He has a lethal threat in the air if he can hit Osip. He also has a plus one, plus one counter to throw around. Taking a look at Osip's hand, looks like a bunch of creatures. He has a ravenous dagger claw, dagger tooth, excuse me, in hand, which does have enrage to gain two life, potentially. Xali's Keeper representing a lot of damage as well, though, on the battlefield. Yeah, this is looking really tough for Osip. With two blockers back, even with one, Osip did, did not have lethal. He's got three power on the walker and one power on the diviner. So he would have needed to find a way to get an additional point of power through to Owen through just the, t uh, the Wayfinder. But the Diviner, excuse me, the uh, Keeper makes it even more difficult. Yeah, lots of ways for Owen to push through more damage here. Sitting on the table. Yeah, it looks like Osip's just going to extend the hand there. The writing was on the wall. Peach Garden Oath picking up a win here in round 10. Advancing to 8 and 2 into round 11. So they've got to, like you said, Marshall, they've got to win out if they have any hopes of top fouring here at this tournament. We did not get a chance to see Reed Duke's deck, but maybe we'll see it a little bit later in the day. But boy, did he won, win quickly. Oh, yes, he did. Let's take a peek here on table B. Ben Sek, and uh, well, he's just going to extend the hand there. With Huey's got a red-black pirate deck. We saw a little bit of it in action, but not a whole lot. There you see... Uh, got some players hanging out on the left side of your screen. That is our time walk match, which we will get a chance to see. Jansen, Goldfarb, and Greg Orange, the Citrus Assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I love their team jerseys, too. Just great. Just great. Versus Nagy, Peebles Monday, and Jarvis U. Coming up a little later. Walking away. But that was a uh, some that was a really interesting game to watch there, I Marshall. Loved, I, I loved every minute of that. It was fantastic. There was some fun little mind games going about the type of minutia that players of this level tend to get into. That you know we saw that that exciting bluff of one damage and those oh, type yeah. of plays. All right. Well, we'll have our time walk match for you after these messages. <laughs> 